Yo, this is your boy Gallagher, and this is Common Conversations. This is a podcast where we talk about everything under the sun from business, politics, marriage, life, and the pursuit of whatever. And no topic is left off the table. We come together to cry, laugh, agree, and disagree. Let's go. So check it out. I got a special guest with me today. He's real fun. I'm going to have a lot of cool fun. So I played the edited version of this song because I told myself I was going to be on my best behavior. Um, But it's not going to happen because it's me and it wouldn't just it wouldn't be me uh, not to be on bad behavior. Well, my man, I'm I'm, I'm, going to be yourself, though. I'm going to start it out like this. This is pastor because I know he don't want me to do that. So this is Pastor Maurice Ball, right? But you know, but my man is bigger than just being a pastor because he's he's a father, he's a, he's a son, he's a he's a husband. You know, he actually opened uh, a new business here in Clarksville, right? So they over there kickboxing, kickboxing. and so here this is where I'm breaking my room, they, my rule. They over there kickboxing and teaching people how to kick ass, right? Yeah, we that's what we do. Okay, there it is. He, yeah. You notice he ain't gonna say that. I'm gonna try to get him slip. If y'all was watching or y'all was listening to the show <clears throat> last week when I had Scott on here, you know, my, my goal was to kind of pick on Scott and, and to get him to, to rock with me too. But Scott, you know, he's he's got a good boomerang. Uh, yeah. He, he was yeah, throwing them and tossing them back. You got to be quick. You got to be quick on the draw. You got to be quick on the draw. <laughs> true story. True story. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to start it off. And then, you know what? I'm going to do this. I got a series of questions okay. um, for, for you. But I'm, I got to start the show off like this. So, common conversations for those of y'all tuning in. It's This is a show about... Uh, the things that we discuss on a daily basis, um, everything that happens in my household, your household, you know, what we doing, how you do it. You know, so if you're out there, you know, protesting in the streets, then this is, you know, protesting might be your common conversation. Right. You know, if you got a family member, member in a hospital, you know, that might be your common conversation. You know, if you got people in your office and they over there knocking down books and misplacing wires and you want to have a conversation with them about that, <laughs> that might be, you know, your common thread. So this is this is the show where we get down with the get down. No topic, like literally no topic is off the table. Uh, right. And so if we want to talk about sex, drugs, mathematics and <laughs> economics, you know, they can be all blended. It all could work together. And this man said he was going to come play with me today. Oh, for sure. I ain't scared. So we opening the door for all <laughs> pastors for the rest of the year, right? Because we, we get ready to walk into the holiday. And I know holiday is important uh, for a lot of religions. Birth of Jesus and uh, yeah. and a bunch of other stuff. That's important. The birth you know, of Jesus. We, and yeah, yeah, okay. Birth, birth yeah, of birth. Jesus is important. The birth of Jesus okay, is Okay, right. And yeah, a bunch of people that. about to have some babies because they've been in COVID lockup. For sure. All right, all right. Uh, actually, November, December, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a ton of new babies. All right, so there's a bunch of round bellies about the release. Yeah, for sure. All right, there it is. Yeah. So I'm not going to be on my best behavior. Um, so if y'all want to go ahead and I'm just going to, I'm just going to share this. Y'all go ahead and hit that ticker. Go ahead and throw us some money in the in the in the cussing jar. I mean, the jar's not on the table, but you're more than welcome to. Uh, <laughs> Patronize. Yo, this is water because, you know, it is water. Jesus gave him the power to turn it into wine. Didn't give me the power. Oh. <laughs> he, hey, you know, good water. It's, it's, uh, it's the water boy, the high quality H2O. The high quality H2O. So yeah. I told you I'm about to wild out today. We're going to have a little fun. I am glad you came and sat man, with me, my man. Man, I'm glad you, 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 you offered. I mean, well. We did. We just kind of had a conversation. We had a conversation, and you you could you could be honest. You could be like, "Yo, when I get on the show." Yeah, for the most part. I, I mean, was like, "Yo, I, I see you, and I'm on there, but I, I ain't never get no invite." Yeah. Right. You know so I mean? you got no. So he didn't. He didn't. He still didn't get an invite. That's right. He, he was like, "I'm coming." And um, I said, okay. And I'm going to be honest, right? It's been a hell of a week. And my wife was like, are you doing a show today? When I went home, I was like, nah, I think I'm going to take a break. And then I looked down at my phone, and I was like... Yo, who's who's MB? Ah. And then he texted me and was like, yo, what's going on for the night? And I was like, duh. Yeah, no, we got to do the show. <laughs> uh, see, I ain't, even, I ain't even got my full name in this phone. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm just a, I'm just initials in there. <laughs> that's on my calendar. That's important. <laughs> you on my calendar. Oh, okay. So I you, you, I mean, not everybody gets on the calendar. I take like literally people be like, I got an appointment with you, Miguel. And I'd be like, it ain't on my calendar. They should feel bad. No, I'm just playing. Don't, not real. Don't, don't, don't take that. Sometimes I'm just forgetful. <laughs> You're about to get me in trouble, cousin. <sighs> so, yo, so I was, um, so I'm, uh, you know, again, I got a series of questions for you, but welcome uh, to Common Conversations. If you're watching out there, you're, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. I think I'm even streaming on my personal YouTube channel, which is really cool. Uh, so I probably should really behave there because the whole world doesn't know I'm, I'm, I'm affluent um, at cussing. 
Um, so that is my first language, and then English is my second. Okay. Um, but if you ask my daughter, since she back in the day, she asked me to look up the actually origin origin words of all the cuss words. Uh, English is still my first que- okay. first language because they yeah. most of them come out of the UK. Yeah. You using them <laughs> compound cuss words? Are they, are they, Bruh. Are they compound? Man. Oh. Okay. Oh. I can get lethal. Oh. Lethal. Yeah. But I'm not allowed to be lethal in here. I got some respect. We got at least PG-13, right? <laughs> Rated new R. PG, new we we going to be PG-13 today. New PG-13. New, we gonna, yeah, new PG. Okay, we're going to be new PG-13, <laughs> maybe Reddit R. So we got Leo Braddock. What's going on? Cheers. All the wife is on Leo, there. Yo, my man. And then baby, she, baby said, man, y'all can't count. Yeah, you're right. You know I can't count, except for when you tell me yes or no. I count all. I do count all her yeses and her noes. Those go in the bank. But all right, so I was always, um, so you 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 was out here. You be out here protesting, yeah. right? We, we got a lot of civil unrest. And I was thinking about something the other day as I was driving. Um, and then I listened to, I was listening to um, Apple Music about half hour or so ago. I don't even remember the show, so I ain't about to bring it up. But I was thinking about in the midst of all the national conversations about the protests that have occurred, Minneapolis, Atlanta, Mm -hmm. Ohio, you know, of course, Kentucky, because we're we're still at it, you know, and I consider us still Kentucky, even though we're in southern Indiana. I was thinking about the fact that Indiana had three deaths by police officers, actually technically four. Okay. So Malcolm Milky Williams was killed in, I believe, in March, March yeah. by state cop, right? I think it was a... Uh... In, yeah, late March or beginning of April. Late March in there, okay. Yeah. Um, and then there were three there were three murders. One where a cop ran over a pregnant, a black pregnant woman, if I remember correctly, in Indianapolis between uh the Breonna Taylor and the George Floyd protests. And I'm and I was wondering hmm. why they didn't make national news. Like, what is it about Indiana that this thing has not spiraled? I mean, even we even had a we even had a lynching. An almost lynching, well, excuse yeah, me. Right. We had an almost lynching in Bloomington yeah, right. um, of the guy who is head of the human relations. You know, what are your thoughts there? I'm just curious. Um, I think with I think with some of them, it was just timing because, you know, we've been on 100 percent lockdown and especially with the Malcolm Williams thing. And we are actually helping his mom trying to get get justice on that. That happened and everybody was on lockdown. And I think the Breonna Taylor thing kind of overshadows all these other cases because of the proximity. You know, I didn't hear anything about the pregnant woman in Indianapolis, and I don't know why I didn't hear anything about that. I just think that the national spotlight, I think the timing, it's never a good time for any of us to die for any reason. True story. It's never a good time. But I think that the timing of these situations are are being overshadowed by the timing and the visibility of other situations that are getting more attention. You had the Breonna Taylor thing. You had the Jacob Blake thing. I mean, of course you had the George Floyd thing. So those are, you know, and even with Jacob Blake, if you look at him, if that would have happened probably a month prior, it probably would have went right under the radar. So, and and so in all this, and so we, all this travesty, right? We, we've got the, we've got trauma being handed to Mm -hmm. us, deaths being handed to us by our own. For sure. Um, in a sense of the police department. Is it, so I'm curious more so specifically about Indiana. Is it minimized here? Like what, what is it that, like, we don't see a whole lot of protesting here. Now we did something in here in New Albany. Right. Right. We had that one and we did a few things. There was a few small marches. In Jeff. In couple, Jeff. put on a couple in Jeff. Yeah. And then, right. and then there was a couple in Indianapolis, but it didn't take fire. Like the screen for justice didn't take fire like it did in some of the other, the other cities and states. Right. You know, is Indiana that different? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know what, I can't put my finger on it. I can't say what, I don't know if it's a, um, I don't know. And I, and I ain't even trying to figure it out. I just, I just don't know. I just think Indiana's different. I don't think we're yell like, I get what you're saying. We're not yelling loud enough or more consistent enough to actually be able to spark a wave in here, here in Indiana to change anything for the ones that are dying here. But um, I don't know why that is. I don't. Hmm. So you do know. you think, do you think we got to, so and my man Leo put up there, he said, you know, there's been the last month, there's been two um, Indianapolis Police Department shootings, even currently. So let me ask you, this, do we do we have a because where are you originally from? Indianapolis. East so side. you so you from Indy. Yeah. East side of Indy. Yeah. This is going to be fun, y'all. <laughs> uh, are the Negroes in Indiana different than in other states? Like 
Um, and yes, people, I said Negroes, get your heads out your butts. You know, you know, one of the, the, the I really can't answer because I left Indianapolis and 20, 25 years ago. Okay. So, but, yeah, so you so left, you got some experience. Where did you go? Cause we going to, I'm going to stay on this topic, but where'd you go? I went to, um, I went to San Diego. Okay. Yeah. Joined the Navy, went to San Diego. And so I was out there for for a minute, and then I came back to said from San Diego. You was in the Navy longer than a minute. About uh, no, nah, it was really about a minute. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> was, Sixty it, seconds. He it, was like, I don't want this. Like, I'm out. It was like a like a year and a half. Okay. So my dad was murdered, so they let me out on the hardship. Got you. So got I came, you. Sorry to so hear I, that. So I came back to the crib, and um, I was only here for a few more months before I went to North Carolina. Yeah. So yeah, and then I went to I went from Indianapolis to San Diego, back to Indianapolis. To, to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Got you. So what? What, yeah. what are the black folks like in Carolina in comparison? To oh, it's Indiana? different. They, they. I mean, it seemed like. Here's what I can kind of attribute. It seemed like Indiana was the. It's all suburb. That's what it seems like. Okay. Okay. So, so it's not like it's real. Even the like when you go into these other parts, it's hard. Like you know, what I mean, like some of the 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 low income in areas and the hoods are hoods. And I grew up in the hood. I grew up on 38th Street. Anybody know 38th Street, Moselle Sanders, um, uh, the Meadows? It was the toughest neighborhood in the in Indianapolis. Got you. Um, and you had your you had your stuff, but I just don't think that uh, I think people got so comfortable with it, it's just normal. And I think in these other places, it people are tired of it. You know okay. what I mean? Like okay. I, I, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but I just think like that they're tired of it. And I don't think Indianapolis or Indiana as a state has gotten tired. So the of black it. people in Indy have yet right. to have yet to get to the point of exhaustion that sure. they're ready to, to to really eradicate right for this, sure this thing. All right, that's cool. I mean, it yeah. makes sense, you know, because I'm like, man, you know, Indiana, like much respect, and I definitely want justice for Brianna, and I think the AG, as my man was telling me earlier today, is a bully, um, but he's a tool of a bully. So, but he gets to chop. He should get chopped in the throat too um, for definitely not Absolutely. giving Brianna justice because he's a coward punk. But we're gonna keep moving. Black folks in Indiana just ain't got the muster yet. Right. That's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. let's I mean, I know there's, you know, sure. so that means the white people in Indiana got to be a little bit more savage or different. I'm just throwing words out there. Get mad at me or not. Um, mm, they, I, I don't know. They got some serious control. Like if you can keep murking people like Doc, look, we got three people murked between, between Brianna and Floyd, right? Four. Right, because mm-hmm. we got three in Indianapolis. We got one down here in Jeffersonville. And my man just said, yo, there was two other shootings just in the last month. So that's that's seven people, seven unarmed black people shot in the state of Indiana. I mean, white people here got a different kind of control. That And that could be, for sure. Yeah. I think that, you know, you got that good old boy network thing going on. I think that, uh, I think because we're not yelling as loud as we could be, that, we're not ruffling any feathers. So the, it's, it's the agitators are the one that gets the attention. And when I say agitators, I'm not saying it in a bad way. If you look at, if you go through the civil rights, you have Martin Luther King, them, they were agitators. They were always challenging the system, always moving and provoking the system, however they was moving it. And the system had to pay attention to them because they were causing so much, so much attention on, on a cause. Um, after he died, then all the agitators became part of the system. So I don't think we have real people that's really ready to stand up and yell from the top of the lungs on top of the buildings that is no justice, no peace or justice for all. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think we have that leadership like Leo just said. And, uh, you know, leadership is is lacking. True story. Leadership is definitely yeah, lacking. Sure. So, so, and, and on the on the black side and on the white side. So, let me let me throw this at you real quick because mm-hmm. I, I really want to get into the meat of who you are okay. um, and how we met and a bunch of other stuff. But so, my, my other thought process in this is, um, what what does it take for us to? Let me let me rephrase this. I'm sorry. So, if 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 I told you that white leadership, when asked the question early before 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 the the murders became or these deaths by you know police um became so so spirited so public mm-hmm. um when brought up and said hey how do we meet equality 
Um, how do we find social and economic equality in our communities, in our business, in our in our government? You know, if if we learn that white leadership yesterday was saying, well, we ain't got a dog in this fight. You know, we're not going we're not going to address it. We're not going to touch it. Mm -hmm. Right. And the same people were in leadership today in southern Indiana, where we all live. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think the you can't fault the leadership at hand because. We have to fight to get a seat at the table. Okay. If we don't have a seat at the table, we have no say so in any of the stuff that's going on. Okay. And, and getting and and change only happens if we got the seat at the table. That, that's inclusion. You know what I mean? Like if if we're not included in a conversation, if we're not included at the table, how can we actually even sit down with somebody that may even side with us? They just don't hear our side. So what if we have a seat at the table? Then, because if I'm at the table, you at the table. Which, the start. Mean, which means that we have to start strategically getting more people at the table so that we can influence something to go our way for our community. So we've always been told that, you know, if we had a seat at the table, right, mm -hmm. then, you know, we would we would be able to have some degree of impact. Right. We, sure. we you know, we, we would help drive message policy, whatever, and that relationship. So if, if we if we're getting opportunity to sit at the table, but while we're at the table, we're still outnumbered. We're still in their infrastructure. We're still in their systems. Um, and mm -hmm. although we're mm -hmm. at the table, we're calling it inclusion. We're still really just blanketing and, and, and dipping our toe in the word diversity, not inclusion. Right, right, right. Yet we still don't have the power right. or we, we don't even get truly an opportunity to voice. Or let, let's just say we get people like Kentucky's AG mm -hmm. at the table and he's clearly the right hand of the master. You know, how do we, how do we, how do we address that? It's getting the right people at the table. Okay. Getting the right people. Is yeah, there you any, I mean, like, 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 is there it, any point I can say to get you to say we should blow up the table? You know what? I think that, I think we can. I, you know what? I, I can agree with you because the table is, if there's no action to it, it's just us sitting at a table. Okay. So if, if we can apply action or if we can just start to really uh, show the, the 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 injustices and the uh, inequalities that stretch across our community, and sometimes we just have to take things into our own hands in our own communities. Got you, got you. You know, like the COVID did a lot for a lot of minorities. A lot of people sprang up with witty, creative ideas. A lot of people, you, the community started growing closer. People started go shopping and keeping the money within the community. That's where it starts. We spend nine cents on every dollar in somebody else's community. That's, that's billions of dollars that leave our community all the time. If we take that money and start recycling it back into our communities and we start buying up these the, the, the land where you see this gentrification happening and they allow the property value to go down, we not in the game. Got you. So we, okay. We're we not in the game. We can't we can't take advantage of the building that's sitting here on the corner that's about to be demolished and it had a for sale sign in it for 10 years. We not in the game because our money ain't right. All right. All right. So how do we do that? Let's let's move on from, you know, getting a seat at the table, you know, bickering with white people, asking them for a slice of the pie that we baked. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, how, how do we. So if we were, you know, we, let's talk Jeff. Right. Jeff New Albany. You uh -huh. know, what, do, what do we do to start buying up those boarded spaces? What do we do uh, to, to start building businesses in key spots like is there is there ways to collaborate is it are these just individual efforts you know how do we get you know that nine cent i think the the collaboration one you you gotta you you gotta look at the um planning the the, the city planning and look at the areas where they're moving to okay so when i lived in charlotte uh my homeboy was part of this uh part of the planning committee and even though our money wasn't Right. They had a five mile radius from this mall that used to be called Eastland Mall used to be like jumping. It was it was the joint. But they allowed the property value to go down so much and everything around it started to be sold off. But the construction was coming that way. So within a five mile radius of where this mall sat was going to be the development. But because our money wasn't right, we couldn't get in the game. So you have to be able to, you can get in the planning committee and go look at the, at the, at the planning committee and see where, where's the next development at. When I was in Birmingham, my homeboy was like, Hey man, if you want to get into real estate, don't buy any houses over in this area. 
They're doing all the de- all the all the development is going to be moving towards this way, where you get up in the in these ran down houses where the houses are, you know, going for seven to ten thousand dollars. You want to go buy houses up there and sit on them because that's where the development's going. So being able to get educated as to where the development's going, and then being able to have the resources to be able to jump in and purchase some of this stuff, um, and that starts with financial education credit, you know, resources, which keeps a lot of us, that keeps us out of a lot of things, especially when you throw that credit thing up, that credit thing is uh, skirt, put brakes on everything. So what, what programs or do we have them? Right. So I know if we go to Louisville, there's, there's, we're talking about, you were talking about land, land grants, you know, mm-hmm. land dollars. We're talking about being able to restore certain segments of the town. We're talking about different dollars that are coming in different places. Um, you know, when we talk about financial education and financial literacy, you know, there are programs that are dedicated to what's happening in the West End and, and some of the other right. areas that are economically challenged. Do we have programs like that specific to helping African-American and Hispanic and Latino communities grow in Southern Indiana? You know what? I honestly don't know. And, and, and I'm being honest yeah. as a, I mean, we just migrated up here three years ago, which is no excuse, you know what I mean? To not know, but I don't know, which is, a, which, which convicted me to now that I feel that I need to know because I'm in conversations like this all the time. And normally I'm a resource and I don't have nowhere to direct people to on that question. That's solid. So I honestly don't know. But I know you do a lot of things with with business and young people. So I'm pretty sure you could be a, a phenomenal resource. And um, even with this show and start, just kind of spotlighting, hey, today is going to this week. We're going to look at if you want to do this X, Y, Z, go to this website and boom, boom, boom. Because I really don't know. But I think that um, I think that 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 could be something that we could actually become a resource for all right so the topic of this show um is now called build your own table uh, i dig it so that's what we I call this it. is about building so we're gonna we're not gonna have a kind con- my normal conversation is about the flawed fucked up system sorry i know i was gonna sneak one in on you uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know because there's really no other way to explain it i mean we can go in here and, and use all kind of entangling uh, exp- you know, expansive words, but be honest, the God's truth. I think the only thing that explains our system is just after drop the f bomb. So we talk about the destruction, right? That, that we that, or the trauma that we face as Black people. We talk about the opportunities that that are limiting, or we're limited to, or mm-hmm. the access to resource. So, yeah, we're going to talk about let's how how do we build this table? So we we know that I, I can tell you there's there's very few financial institutions or programs that I'm aware of in Southern Indiana that are specific to helping black people reach a level of uh, stability uh-huh. and then taking that stability to a level of thriving. So I, I don't know that there's anything here that does that. I know that there are definitely programs that, that help the wealthy grow and that's just the reality, right? right. So, you know, thinking about it in that sense, um, credit is a monster. Credit is a monster. Credit is a monster, but here's the deal. Most of the country is in debt anyway, our country is in debt. Our president right. has been known to file bankruptcy. So I'm sure he's got shitty credit. He just got a lot of cash. Maybe. maybe um, right. So, how you know, so, for you know, in some capacity, I do believe that they use credit um, differently on black folks than they do on white folks. And it's another gatekeeper. Right. Um, but we do need to have a conversation about credit. For sure. And we need to do it early. For sure. Um, so, OK, we need to create a program here locally because I know I can I can name off ne- several resources in Louisville. But right here in our backyard, Jeffersonville, uh, Sellersburg. So if somebody's out there and you know of any man, point us in the right direction because it'd be good to share that. I think the uh, what is it? The junior uh, junior achievement. Junior achievement. Yeah. There's a junior achievement here in Jeff. Shut too. up. I'll get that information for you because my coworker, he he does it. He's part of um Okay. He's part of junior achievement. Well, I want to connect with him, so we need to have a deeper talk, deeper yeah, conversation sure. as well. So we know we got junior achievement. All right. So and that so we we you know, because we have our urban league in Indianapolis and, and I love Sadiqua over in Louisville and much what she does in, in the Urban League in Louisville. No connect, you know, there's no real live connect over here where we could just walk out our front door, go down to 10th Street, or we're in Main Street right here in New Albany. We can't walk out the door. So, you know, all right, we got to build this table. So I want to, I want to, how do we build, what do we have to have? Like, I think about, um, I think about the fact that we don't, we we don't have, I'm going to go on a limb and say, we don't have no foundations that are black run or governed 
in Southern Indiana. So anytime we want to do something that pulls in dollars, even for a nonprofit, we we're basically going outside out, outside our, our base. Right. And we know most. And I'm not saying everybody is bad. Not all white people are bad. Not all white systems are, are corrupt. Um, but the fact is, is that we we're still kind of going to a potential place that is not for us. What is it? So what do we, you know, so we got to create a foundation. How do we do that? Like, what are the things that we got to put in place to build our table? What does our table look like to you? First is education. Education has to be key because my dad didn't tell me about credit. He told me how not to mess my credit up. Got you. He didn't tell me the why behind it. You know what I mean? He just, Hey, don't mess your credit up. I go to college. They give me a free t-shirt. Guess what? I got a credit card. Because I wanted a T-shirt. You know <laughs> right, right. I remember then, those days. Then, then, and then not only did they give me one card, I get another T-shirt and get another card without any any understanding of of money. So you give a, a, a kid from the hood two credit cards that was probably about $1,700. So you think I'm balling. I'm at Freak Nick. We, <laughs> yo, he said, y'all, y'all ain't old yeah, enough y'all, to know right, about Freak Nineteen ninety three Atlanta got to redact some of that stuff because uh, that that stuff was uh, no cell phones. We said, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no pictures. We'll surface from that. But um, but the you know I didn't have any understanding of the why behind. He told me not to do it, so I'm spending this cash on these credit cards, just killing the debt, not even understanding. That I, one, I had to pay that back. I mean, I was, we was, we was in Atlanta and I put the card in the machine. This is when the car, this is when the machine used to just keep it. Bruh. I stuck the joint <laughs> in the machine. Go ahead. That bug just kept it. <laughs> and I just walked off like, oh, okay. Oh, I guess, man. I guess, I guess that's it. Yeah. And that hundred, that, that, that money followed me around for probably 10 years. True story. You know what I mean? And and I think that if we could start with educating and understanding leveraging and credit and the uh, and finances, I think that could be the base of building the table because we don't have to push our our kids and these young people to jobs. We could push them di- directly into entrepreneurship if they understand the finance part of it. That is true because a lot of people, I mean, and this this goes for white folks as well. You know, there's a lot of people who get in this game and don't understand the finances. Right. Um, and, you know, but a lot of it is because they, you know, if you look at it too, they don't really run good finances in their household. So that's that's also that struggle. Right. So we, okay, right. I got you. So we need to create a program that teaches on a daily basis. It needs to be part of our common conversation, right? Mm-hmm. We need to be talking about economics on an ongoing basis, sure. you know. Okay. All right. Um, so education on the financial side. What else? What else? Exposure. Do you think? Exposure. Exposure. Like, what does that mean? Exposure is big. So, uh, I'm 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 real big on people resources. Okay. Um, we talking human capital? We talking human capital? Okay, let's go. Not slavery people. Yeah, that's a different yeah. phrase. Human yes. capital. Human capital. So my, uh, I have a 15 year old. All right. And my 15 year old had. No matter what he wants to do or be in life, I have somebody that I know that I can expose him to that can help him get there. Got you. So Got you. if he says he wants to be a doctor, I just scroll through my phone, call my homeboy, say, hey, yo, can you mentor my child? Because the reality of it is the things that we want to be, we tend to see. Exactly. And, and we have to see it. So you can't exactly. tell somebody who doesn't have an imagination, who live in a gutter, who don't have a dollar that they could be wealthy because they ain't never met a wealthy person, right? Right. The idea of being a black entrepreneur when you've never seen one outside of a basketball player and a rapper well, you know, what it's, does that look exist. like? Right. It so, exist. so I got to go play ball. I got to be a rapper so I can get the capital in order to become an entrepreneur. Like, And that ain't always love, the road. I would love to send my child over here to learn all this stuff. Let's go. Bring them over. We for, can do the thing. For real. Um, and, and so my day job, I run a mentorship program called Life Literacy Academy. Okay. And I, Who's that with? Where, where's that at? So I work for Community Action of Southern Indiana, and it is a, a mentorship program out of there. So I'm in, uh, I'm in. I'm in three counties, um, four school districts, and probably about 15 schools. Okay. I go all the way up to Scottsburg. Wow. Yeah. You carry a gun when you go to Scottsburg? I don't. You know, surprisingly, uh, I'm only there during the day. Well, that's probably smart. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm there during school hours. So, all right, there it is. So I'm in and out of that piece. Uh, and they right off the highway, so I just jump right on 65. All right, there it um, is. There it is. But, but, you know, the thing is, is that 
even in the rural communities, it's still lack of education. Yeah. It's still, it's, there's still no exposure up there. And so when you, when I'm talking to these kids and I'm like, what do y'all want to be? Guess what? Everybody want to be a rapper. Everybody want to be an entertainer. Everybody want to hoop or play football. And I'm trying to tell them, I'm like, don't you know that one in every 116,000 kids make it? Uh, that's, we need a bigger league. You, you got, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> You got to, you got to, you got to be cream of the crop. You got to be elite, but because they don't see, they're not exposed to anything. They're not exposed to black business owners like yourself. They're not exposed to doctors and lawyers and high, high management people that are working, that are work. They they don't get the chance to see it. So their base is rapping, entertaining and sports. Okay. Okay. I, I can feel that. I'm with you. I know I didn't meet my first, at least as I can recall, I didn't meet my first black true entrepreneur until I moved here. Okay. And so I was in my late 20s, um, going into 30s before I met an actual African-American person who owned a major business. Um, you know, I had heard of it, seen it. So you're, you're right. It's an, and then often it's not until you're exposed. To, right. And, and so I look at my grandfather who uh, was in um, – Cincinnati, he he owned a one of the top um, construction companies in the area. For yeah. he, but because he he did, he wasn't educated, he didn't teach us. He didn't pass it on. You know, all he passed on was work. He didn't pass on the business side of it. So guess what? Today, none of the grandkids are functioning in that business. Did did he? So I'm 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 going to jump on there. You said he because he wasn't educated, right? Um, do you think it was because truly was it because he wasn't educated or because he didn't quite package what he was doing for it to be repeated? Like, you know, I'm a edu- I'm educated. Right. Right. Um, I but I, I learn from doing mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't learn from picking up the textbook. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I can read almost anything you want me to read. I can create theory. But the reality for me, it's the practice right. that gives me knowledge. Right. Um, somebody asked me to do something on a stream the other day and I hadn't taught it before. So I was doing it live, which sometimes is embarrassing, but I don't really care about embarrassing myself sometimes. Right. Uh, so I was like, you know, let's get on here and do it. And, and, I, and I recalled at that moment, I said, man, it's rare that someone asked me to do this in front of other people. So forgive me if I get the terminology wrong. Um, but I'm just going to do it and show you how. Is it possible that it's, it had nothing to do with education, but no one had ever asked him specifically, how do you do the thing? How did you get here? You know, I I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. We as grandkids was just free free labor. Okay, got you. You know got what I mean? You. Like, if you at the crib, you at my granddaddy's house, and you stand there eating his food. You're you, going to work. You're getting on that truck. Yeah. And and my dad, my dad left him because, you know, my dad was like, and all we had to do was get up and get up on that truck. So he had been running the business when my when my dad was younger. Okay, you know what I mean. And my dad was like, I couldn't take that. You know, just getting getting a, getting it on that um on that truck. So when I went to go visit him, it was a repeated thing. Just get on the truck. It wasn't. And then it, it put something inside me that made me despise doing it. So I didn't really want to ask him about it. Got but, you. But with his fourth grade education. You know, he didn't have the tools to say, man, I need to start thinking generational wealth, which is what we we don't think that. But that goes, we don't think generational wealth, but that also goes back to education. Education. It also goes back to having a common conversation. Absolutely. Right. We, we're, we, we fall into, many of us has fallen into this society, this society story of the American and dream, right? You know, get to the American dream, you know, buy a home, you know, have some children, get a great job, live your life, retire, social security, that's socialism people. Um, <laughs> um, and 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 then you can have you can have all the things that you want in life. But we also realize that the American dream was never really built for black people. It wasn't for us to have access to. Right. Um, so I can understand why there was a void of that conversation there. Um, and in any time that, you know, re- historically, we had black folks who were thriving um, and building their own. It was and in some sense it was destroyed. For sure. Um, so, OK, OK. So one of the things that we have to do then as we are building our own our table, table right. um, is, again, including that common conversation of the things that we do well mm-hmm. and teaching what we do well. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's OK if our children or our friends don't gravitate to it. For sure. But they're getting the knowledge. Absolutely. And they'll be able to speak on a thing. Absolutely. OK. So, so what are the things that I've been thinking about 
um, over the last couple of weeks was, you know, the old saying, it takes a village. It takes a village to raise, uh, raise these kids now, right? Yeah. Now, you're in my village. You come with a skill set. If you think about the village back then, you had you had bakers and ironsmiths and, you know, seamstress and whatever else was a was a craft. Yes. So in the village. So the village people all learned, the kids all learned the different craft. Yeah, you became a master of your craft, but I'm going to send you over here to learn how to do this iron thing. We're going to barter. I'm going to get bread. He going to teach you how to how to, you know, forge this sword yes. or whatever it is. Yes. So now selectively we can build our own village and start to really equip our children with the things that they need. Cause they're going to be the ones that, that bring this thing in the, into fruition. We got to give them a, a platform to jump off of. True and story. That, so that's what we have to do. We have to start getting in the trenches. We have to be out here making the connections, learning as much as we can so that we can equip them so that they're, when they jump off their platform, they're already under, they understand networking. Their, their, their circles are, are already being forged because I look at some of my uh, son's friends, they're doing phenomenal things where they are and they're going to go off and be great young men and young women and these are his friends that he's keeping in contact with. Now he's going to do whatever he's going to do. And now his village is starting to form at a younger, at a younger age, okay. not at 40. Right. Right. You know right. what I mean? I'm almost, I'm 47. So my, you old man, I am. I'm just playing with I you. Am. I just turned 45. I, I ain't far behind you. Oh, let's go. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's that new 45. You yeah, know there I mean? it is. The 40s, the new 30. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you play with me 40, the new 18. I'm always young. Let's Boy, go. Peter go Pan and this bitch. I can't, I can't go back to 18. Bruh, I was doing amazing things at 18. I, I mean, 19, I, 20, 21. If I can get what I was getting at 18 now, oh, I'd be on a different level. But, uh, but what, yeah. what level would you be on? I, mean, I don't even know. I'd be. I have to level up, level up, level up. <laughs> now I'd be on somebody. I'd be on it. I would just be in a different place. Like I didn't understand real estate. I look yeah. at the money that I blew. Yeah. On Jordans. True story. That now instead of me buying Jordans, I'm buying precious metals. Okay. Gold, titanium. I ain't that, silver. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm starting at the silver level. Yeah, I mean? like silver. I mean, I love silver. I got I mean, silver in my pocket. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, cause cause you know, gold is like eighteen or. Two thousand dollars an ounce. Okay. Um, g- silver is like uh, twenty four dollars an ounce. You know, so you start looking at precious metals. Um, so I'm starting to look and say, man, I ain't gonna spend two or three hundred dollars on these J's. I'm gonna go over here and put my money into something that's that's gonna work for me and flip. Even though I could flip my J's. Yeah. Uh, but again, <laughs> I mean, it ain't. It ain't it ain't like being able to sell silver to China. Yeah, for sure. Or you know, or or Brazil. I can't I can't oh, roll me. up I can't roll up over overseas and buy a meal. Nah. With this Jordan. Nah. But if I got the pocket full of silver, we can do the damn thing. Yeah, I can. So okay, that's a, yeah. that's a, that's another conversation, mm-hmm. right? So you know, we, we're talking about investment, right? Is that is that something that we have to have at our table as well? Like, absolutely, because you don't always have to be a business owner to own a business. That is true. You don't always have to be the business, the person working in the business absolutely. to own the business. Absolutely. So is that is that part of building absolutely. the table as well? Okay, so we got to we got to put investment on there, human capital, networking. We got to become philanthropists. We. We right. have to be in a position to where we can sow into a younger startup business. Uh, so how do we get the, if we don't have the money in our own systems, how do we become philanthropists? We have to get out here and grind. We got to grind. We got to grind. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do until you're able to do what you want to do. A true story. Message. Let's go. You, you, you know we can I mean? pack that. Let's go. I'm game. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I, I might have to work uh, a little bit harder to give my son an opportunity, but my dad had to work a little bit harder. To give me an opportunity. I mean, you know what I, mean? I mean, opportunities aren't easy. I, let, let's put that out there because I think a lot of people will be like, man, if I had the opportunity, I'd do the damn thing. And the reality of it is, is opportunity permits, <laughs> opportunity is presented to you on a daily basis. Right. Now, the question is, are you willing to work hard enough, right, and plant the right seeds? And and and, and I hate this word, but be patient enough because patience is, is time is relative. But be patient enough to, to watch those seeds harvest. You have to uh, be. You know it's what I mean? the game. So you know what I mean? Right. So a and lot Leo of people say instead of buying J's, you buy 
you buy you buy shares of uh, shares of Nike. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. For, my homeboy back in the day he used to work for me, and I, I, he he's a sneakerhead, and I love him. And I used to say, you know, I used to count his. I I know what I paid him, so um, I, I knew how much money he was making, and I knew how much the shoes cost on his shoe on his feet. And I was like, yo, bruh, like every time you go buy a new pair of shoes, you should be buying a share of stock. That instead of buying three pair of shoes this week, buy one. And a share. Buy one and a share. I said, because at some point in time, these shoe companies, you're going to be paying yourself. Right. Right. You're going to own. So everybody who goes out here that's a sneaky head dropping money, you're going to be making you're going to be making dough while you sleep. man. And and I wish he would have done it. I don't think he did. He may have. I haven't talked to him in some years. But, yeah, you got to buy shares in the things that you use on a day to day on a daily basis. But if you don't know, you know, what I mean, like. If I don't know the starting point, it sounds good, but t- where do I go to buy it? Can I roll up in Kroger? You know what I mean? Where do I buy stock? <laughs> you, oh, well, you, you okay, there like, we go. Where's the starting line? All right. If if I don't know the starting line, then you telling me a good idea. Yeah. It sounds great. I love it. Okay. But where do I start? So we got We got to find our starting points. We got to start up. Find our starting so points. so as this conversation has started, the question was, where do we do this in Southern Indiana? Because we know a lot of metropolitan cities have opportunities. Mm-hmm. They got access. Um, we're right here. I think we're just short of a hundred thousand um, people resident. You know, in, in population, if you add the two counties, right, give or take, uh, maybe a little more than that. Because I think Jeff has about fifty or sixty thousand people, give or take, whatever. So mm-hmm. the point is, is like for Black folks, we need to build our own. We need to we need to come together and and instead of asking for uh, a, a slice of the pie that we baked, right? And sitting at the table where we're silent, right. or, you know, we're not silent, but we're being silent uh, or silenced. Um, we're saying, hey, let's build our build our own table. So we we have to, you know, we said networking, human capital, investments, talk about entrepreneurship, trades, um, and, and 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 Tia said something you unique on on the on the uh, tag up there too, where she talked about let's talk about um, stronger value on skilled trades, labor, and build. You know, because the reality of it is, is that you don't have to be a pipe builder, you don't have to be a welder, you don't have to be a plumber to learn a trade because there are all different types of trades and skills. Fashion designers have a trade and skill. They're called seamstress, right? Right. Um, You know, people who do AV, sound and audio, not going anywhere. You know, that's a trade and a skill, you know, being, you know, and actually this is engineering, Mm-hmm. If we really want to talk about it, right? For and sure. so you got a lot of folks who are out here having the capabilities of an engineer on multiple levels without ever going to getting a formal education because they can sit in a room from with, with a group of people and learn. Absolutely. So we've got to build that as well, right? So the white folks yeah. in our community are doing that. We got a Maker 13, you know, you know, hats off because their companies have been really successful. They've been able to throw those dollars in there. Mm-hmm. But you're saying on the philanthropy side, we got to do the same thing. We got to here. Do the same so thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to throw some people under the not we ain't gonna throw no gonna people, throw people under the bus, the people. Bus. Yeah, we are. We gonna throw some people on the bus. Okay, here it is. So, who who in our community? We're, we'll talk agency, not not person. Who in our agency could we go to between here in Indianapolis uh, and and solicit dollars so that we can start building our own table? Uh, Horseshoe, Horseshoe Casino, the Horseshoe Grant. They they have a grant. Sam Tech. All right, Sam Tech. Sam Tech is a, a phenomenal company. The people that we probably need to get to are probably not in Southern Indiana. You know what I mean? If we all tap into our resources, we could probably tap into some professional athletes that that might drop a few, you know, some dollars. If you look at uh, the things that Tyler Perry's doing, and he he funds a ton of stuff. Being able to just kind of look at our networks and 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 tap into them and not be scared to ask for this startup capital, especially if we're talking about empowering you. That's why my program is, is, is so successful is because it's youth based and the core of it started off only as minority youth. So we were touching on all the minority youth in Southern Indiana. Got you. And so, but then now they, they, they kind of redefine what minority is now is no longer just, uh, uh, ethnic group it's social economics and other things that are accompanied in that but the base of it is we're get, we get to reach these minority kids so i'm gonna I'm gonna I'm charge you because I, I mean i like this conversation we've been having it for a minute and i will hold people hostage as long as folks want to hang out and oh, watch hey, y'all can good. watch and you know if you want to listen to it on the podcast i'm gonna you know cut this up chop it up and throw it on the podcast later so how do we 
you know, so we're, we're saying two, two, we're two educated men, uh-huh. right? We own a business here locally in Southern Indiana. And I, you know, I know quite a few other black folks. We've actually seen um, some new black businesses born. And, and you said yeah. that during COVID. Sure. Um, and I think we need to tackle and, and see what we can do to uplift us and, and put us in a different space. So I want to I want to charge it, though, and put it we I put a challenge on the table to everybody who's listening, who has reach to for us to start creating equitable programs. I dig it. In southern Indiana for us by us. And I'm not saying white folks can't come to the table. I'm not saying that they can't hold a chair. They can't at, sit at, at the, the table. table. <laughs> All right. But what I am right. saying is that we clearly define this growth and and, and what we want to see as our community as a for us, by us relationship. Um, can I charge you to do that? You can. To start, with, I'm not saying you do it by my, yourself. With everything on my plate that I got going on, we could we could pull in some people to the table and see what we can do. Cause, okay. Because it's, a, it's, a, it's bigger to me. And you know, one of the things that hurt, and this is a generalization that I'm about to say. Say it, brother. This is, the, this is our but, conversation. It's all about honest but, and authentic. Yeah, but you know, one of the things that hurt us in our community yeah. is... We can't work with we we have a challenge Mm -hmm. with working with each other because we have this crab in the barrel mentality. I knew you was going to go there. And I'm going to tell you. So we lived in Charlotte. We owned this. We owned this hair salon. My homeboy owned a shoe company. He owned a a shoe store in the mall. I went to him and I said, hey, man, won't you just put consignment in in our store? You can put all your advertisement all your stuff in the store, the number to the store, everything to the store. We just want to be able to sell shoes in the store. And his response was, and then y'all be compete with me. Yes. It's your product with your advertisement. And all you're doing is giving us a percentage of whatever the shoe sells for. Right. Right. And we're funneling everybody back to see, we don't realize that, there is enough pie for everybody. There is enough pie for everybody. Yes, that is yes. true. The other piece is that there's an education. We talked about this earlier yeah. about business. So what he didn't understand and I'm, is, is probably distribution and wholesale. Right. He right, he's, right, he's, right. he doesn't have a place or space in his mind yet or even understanding uh, of how we actually scale up. Right. We use these words and we hear them in society all day long. Oh, we got to scale up or you need to scale up or you need to build a business that's scalable. But no one really tells you what the hell that means. Um, And on top of that, most of the time, I'm going to guess that a lot of people, when they hear the word, oh, I'm going to scale up, they're thinking in millions, right? Billions of dollars. And you don't necessarily always need that. Millions of dollars can be attained over time. Oh, sure. Right. So if your business is doing two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Right. And you and you do that over four years. You you hit you're you're hitting your marker. You're gonna hit a million dollars, right? right? You know it's it's the same way if you if you um if you make seventy to a hundred thousand dollars a year in salary at some point in time in your lifetime you're gonna hit a million dollars. So if you can see it and understand money management, resource right. management, right. you can get there. So I, I'm get you. So oh, crabs in a barrel. Let's go there because everybody brings that up. Mm-hmm. Um, we did the uh, we did the uh, the uh, black men's brunch uh, two years ago. And that came up on the topic. So uh, one of the more successful black dudes that I know that live here, um, they manufacture uh, barrels for, for the bourbon industry. And, and he talked about the fact that, you know, crabs in a barrel. You know, one thing that black people can't do is, the, you know, they, 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 they can't work together. We don't trust each other. We have all these different issues. And I laughed at the moment. And he said, what's funny? I said, the fact that you're sitting on my panel and you're saying crabs in a barrel. And he said, what's funny about that? I said, here go six brothers working together right now who don't really know each other, who stepped out to do a thing to educate. I said, that's not crabs in a barrel. I said, we're doing the very thing that we're, we're doing the opposite of what we're saying actually exists. But that's an anomaly though. No, it's not. I, I disagree. Really? I disagree. Okay. okay. So let me, let me, let me change it this way because if you have a different mindset mm-hmm. and we know we have to teach. Mm-hmm. So what, what, what we, if we, if we hold on to this crabs in a barrel or we hold on to this concept that we don't trust each other, then, then we automatically don't. But if, sure. if I know if I know people, right, there's a trust factor. We have to learn how to trust each other, right? People teach us how to trust each other, right? So the trust in, in, in providing resources, sharing resources, that has to be learned over time. For sure. Right? And for some people, it's brand new, right? So I'm not going to call you a crab in a barrel. I dig it. Right? right. Because I, we, haven't, we haven't developed 
the, the trust right. or the relationship, right? Because we talked about human capital for sure, right? Definitely sure. equity in a re- there's equity in relationships, right? So I think I think before we jump out there and say black people don't trust each other, I think black people do trust each other. I think the challenge is, is that black people trust each other for who we are and what we've seen. Right. If but if you sit in a room full of entrepreneurs and business owners, for sure. Right. They're working together. Absolutely. Ah, there ain't no crab in that barrel. Now, competition is good and competition is real. Right. Competition can can hurt, but competition can also drive you to a whole nother vi- a level of innovation. For sure. Right. Because if, if, if you know, we both make T-shirts, you do silk screen. I do vinyl. We Yeah, we competing, but it ain't apples to apple, two different products. Right. But if we come together. And go after the same market, right? And go after a larger market or different market because the people who like vinyl t-shirts might not like silk screen. Right. People who like silk screen t-shirts might not like vinyl. What if we put the vinyl on the silk screen? Gangster, we got a whole new shirt. For sure. Right? For sure. Who can target a whole new audience. Right. And that's just on a simple base. So I, I want to, I want to, I'm going to challenge I mean, that's, you. That's, I, I dig it. I mean, it ain't even a challenge. All right. You made, you made sense. And I'm like. You know, you put you put us in a room of like minded people. We something could happen. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. We can make something happen. It's no different if you take ten cats, throw a ball in there, and, and walk away. They don't know each other. By the end of the by the end of the day, they go they're going to forge some relationships. Absolutely. They're going to start conversing. They're going to learn what they got in common. Yeah. And we're sure. going to build. And here's the thing. If we have educators in a room, and I'm not talking about your traditional educa- educators. I'm talking about people who have knowledge and have wisdom and are willing to share it. For sure. We're going to run into people who have never done a thing. Like one of my slogans is, is in order for you to do what you've never done, you have to do what you've never done. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that, that people always tell me, they'd be like, Miguel, be patient. Be patient with me. I've never done this thing. And I, and I sometimes I look at them, but like, I don't have to be patient with you. I gave you the information. Now you do something with it. I'm not going to wait for you to do something with it right now. You got to go do. So I think in, in a sense, so I'm saying don't be patient with other people to do with the information that you gave them. That's their job to be patient and figure it out. But once you give them the knowledge and keep sharing, I think you have to keep the door open because sometimes we give people shit and they get frustrated. We get frustrated with them because they didn't do nothing with it. Right. For sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, but again, that's that crab in a barrel mentality. Right. Where we're saying, oh, we can't trust it. Look what's happening. It's doing it again. Trust me. I've been there. You know, and I say it. My wife will probably be like, boy, you say this shit all the time in the house and I keep it in the house. I don't come outside and say it. Right. Because I, 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 I get angry, too. But the thing is, is that I keep feeding because at some point in time, the belly get fat, the belly get full. And at some point in time, somebody's going to say, man, I got, you know, after all this eating and I've been doing this thing. Oh, shit. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to figure this out. Let me call this dude real quick. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, man, we gotta put we gotta put some pieces in place. We 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 have to, we have to. Here's the other thing. So we need to we need to we need to create this collecting. You know, I keep drawing on the on the books. I gotta make sure we stay on tabletop, because uh, <laughs> yeah. I normally don't stay on nobody's topic. Um, but so we're gonna build this table. We gotta have we have the the right captains, right? Um, and, and and for those who are listening, captain can be male and or female. And if you transgender, you can come to my table too. Um, so, but. We got to have the right people in place who who say, hey, I really want to build a thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Leo's one of those people. So we just do Leo under the bus. No, nah, we, we just put Leo on the bus. Oh, we put, I like that. Yeah, See, he, we he, change we it. Throw, we, we ain't throwing him under the bus. Leo's on the bus. So the the, the, the subtitle of, the, of this uh, show is called Change the Narrative. Okay. Look at you on the All spot. Right, so we building the table. Building the table and changing and the changing narrative. And changing the narrative. I dig it. All right. Done deal. So. All right, man. Well, this is what I do on Common Conversations. And you just finished listening to Common Conversations with that guy, Miguel H. Yo, I appreciate everybody who tuned in out there. If you watched us live on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever else we're streaming, thank you. Come on aboard. Be a part of the team and the gang. Do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button. Share with your friends and family. And if you feel so willing, go ahead and hit that donate button. Yo, this is your boy, Gelagel, and I will see you on the next podcast. Let's go.